Audrey Voss. Okay. For the Royals, Grace Stapleton, Chloe O'Neill, and then the three seniors. Skyla Smith. Ali Spalding. And Jocelyn Duncan is pretty much our, our set five for the greater part of this season. All right. That will get set for tip off here in a second. And uh, we will get underway. The Royals come in tonight looking to pick up a W after a uh, tough loss the other night at Indian Creek down in Trafalgar. Yep, ready to get back into our conference play. Uh, yeah. The Royals control the tip. Stapleton, uh, Spalding in the corner. Back out to Stapleton. Daleville in a 2 3. So the Royals looking to move the ball around and collapse the zone. Jocelyn thinks about the three. She'll get into the paint. Ball is stolen. Oh, deep three. Yep, deep three by uh, Ashlyn Craig. Joss got it. Alley in the corner. Feeds Skyla on the post. Kicks it back out. Now will take the three from the wing. It's long. Bronco ball. Allie did a good job. Once she threw the ball in the post, she relocated and was able to get open and uh, had an open look. That was nice. That ball was tipped by Spalding. Grace comes up with the rebound up to Duncan. They'll set it up. Grace will take the eight-footer. She leaves it short. Skyla gets the rebound. She misses. Right now, Ashlyn Craig has been... Pretty much the entire Bronco team. Good hedge there by Duncan. Royals in man to man really making the Broncos work. Bad pass turns it over the Royals. They don't look in much of a hurry at this point. No. There we go. Smith puts it in from the elbow. I think they were just trying to be patient, knowing it was just a 2-3 zone there. And, uh, right, and the Royals come out in a 1-2-2 trap. Smith picks up the foul. Pressure in the... Uh, Last JV game pretty much just overwhelmed Daleville. So we'll see how our press affects this varsity team. Right, let's hope it's more of the same. Well, that's Smith's second. Mm. <clears throat> She's probably going to have to head to the bench here real quick. And Caroline Stapleton will check in. Scala picks up two quick fouls. See the ball. And again, it's Craig just running the running pretty much everything for Daleville. Ooh, nearly there. a travel. Yep. And just trying to set that high post screen, right? And yep. curl around. And it does force the travel that time. You can see they've been working on garden ball screens. Yep. And uh, the way they're hedging it. Um, seems like the rules are pretty prepared right now. Jocelyn all by herself, guys. Crazy, get it over there quick. There. Good ball movement. Yep, Duncan will take it. Help, three's long. Good shot, though. Oh. Bronco just being patient. 
Nearly, nearly a banked in three three pointer from uh, Hochstetler. Eastern comes up with the rebound. A really extended uh, two three right now. Right, yeah, they don't normally play up that high, do they? All the way out the volleyball line. Uh, I'm assuming they're worried about shooters, but it leaves the high post open. Right. Well, and it's not great. Grace is not the one that I don't think I would be worried about. Ooh. I'd be more worried about her getting getting by my girls into the uh, into the paint. Offensive rebound there by Grace. Good hustle there, hitting the high post. Yeah. Back out. Caroline Stapleton for three. Rims out. So I'm sure these are exactly the shots that we're looking for. We just got to knock them down. Uh, good ball movement, getting the ball inside and out. Just got to knock them down. Ooh. Nope, that's the second offensive. Uh, no, I guess the last one was travel. That was the offensive foul. So the Royals will set it up again. Stapleton to Stapleton to Duncan. Stapleton is moving it back and forth. Skip cross court. Down to O'Neill on the baseline. She's short. Voss comes away with it for the Broncos. Neither team in much of a hurry. No. This pace is pretty slow. Shows a little bit in the score. 2 nothing with <laughs> over half of the play. <laughs> Jump ball as Spalding just grabs it out of Craig's hands. Yeah, it should be. I know. Should be Bronco ball. Wonder how much the uh, motions are carrying over for our seniors here. Right. Oh, in the corner. Oh, there it is. Three. That's Malia Walker for three from the uh, corner. Gets them on the scoreboard and with the lead. Yep. Oh. O'Neal Banks went in from the three the free throw line. Royals reclaim it, come out in that trap again. Oh. There you go. So they forced the turnover. And they're gonna say it tipped off of Eastern. I don't know about that. J the J V Daleville squad was also trying a similar strategy of throwing over the top. Uh, not very successful for the JV, but we'll see how Varsity does. Right. Well, and, you know, Royals come away with the rebound there and sit up. Yeah, that's and it seems a little risky, especially if you got athletic girls down there at the the far end. Yep. O'Neill tries to save it, but steps on the line. Uh, right into their press. Grace splits them, kicks it out to Duncan. She hits the uh, six to eight footer there. Six three Royals, 2.15 left in the first quarter. And they're really packing that in. It's not, not a lot of urgency to the press. No. O'Neill with the rebound, really? out to Stapleton. Kicks it out to Spalding for three. Long. Duncan comes up with a rebound. Oh, it's going to get knocked out of bounds. Royal ball under the basket. Really like how Chloe went after that rebound there. Right. She like it was kind of a 50-50 rebound. And she went after it. Bowling will come in for O'Neill. Nice cut. Yep. Inbound pass to Stapleton. Caroline Stapleton. Her shot's a little hard. Broncos come down with it. Walker will bring it up. Good job. The deflection by Caroline Stapleton. I wouldn't even worry about the clock on that one. I'm 
not. Okay. Craig will reset it for the Broncos. Oh, yeah. Well, Spalding will pick up the foul there. It's a nice, a nice exchange. Yeah, she just kind of got caught following her, chasing her, and her only chance was the bump. Right. I think sometimes they'll let you get away with that, but not that time. So Craig makes the second. 6-4 Royals. It feels kind of flat in here right now. Yes, it's not a lot of uh, just a slow pace, kind of sluggish yep. right now. Yep. Neither team really shooting it very well. No, and not, and even the plays are more routine than, than anything to get anybody fired up. Oh, well, there's a blown defensive assignment. Yep. Ties it up, just under a minute left. Grace to Caroline, cross court to Duncan. She'll take the three, and it gets there in. There we go. Maybe that'll get us going a little bit. Oh, timeout. Yep, forced timeout. Now let's take this time to check out a commercial from the IHSA. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! All right. Oh man, that was loud. Got the uh, the Broncos inbound, inbounded, bringing it up. Looks like they went a one, like a one-four. All everybody high across. Emma Bolding blocks paths. Grace comes up with it. She's going to go straight to the basket. Oh, no! Nope. Results in a jump. Wow. Who would you give that steal to? Was that Emma that got the steal or Grace? I don't know. Is it a deflection to Boulding and a steal to uh, Stapleton? Everybody does it a little differently. How does Coach Paxton Somebody do it? Somebody doesn't. Uh, I usually do whoever actually possesses the ball. Well, so Stapleton. Boulding hits the three. Got that two threes for the Royals. Got a six-point lead. Oh, and Boulding picks up the foul. 13.9 left in the quarter. There's a lot of stats you can do differently like that, like Nick Nick Euler's uh, rebounds last week in the JV boys game. Right. Spalding with the rebound. Royals are going to get one quick shot off. Stap Caroline Stapleton gets it. Not quite not quite the right angle. So the end of the first quarter, the Royals lead 12-6. Um, only problem I see there was we've got four team fouls already, two of them to Skyla Smith, and that put her on the bench with – just under six minutes to go. So we, we may have seen the, the end of her for a while. And we're going to go ahead. We have a quick video we're going to show you guys that the seniors made tonight. So when asked what Eastern Hancock basketball means to me, I automatically think of a family. Um, these past four years and beyond that, I've just felt this huge amount of like heart, and love and um, just working with my team has been awesome. Not one person steals the show all the time. You know, you have your teammates with you, they're supporting you and it's all about encouraging them and bringing them up and giving them compliments and stuff instead of bringing them down and that's what I felt these past four years. So. When asked, when asked what to think what Eastern, Eastern Hancock basketball, basketball means to me, I automatically, I automatically think We'll we will come back to Skyla and Allie's videos later here. So it'll be Bronco ball to start the second quarter. Uh, looks like the same girls are in for Daleville. Uh, Smith has come back in for Stapleton, so she's got to be careful she doesn't pick up her third here. And then so it's the uh, starters for everybody it appears to be. Yep.
Jocelyn really getting a lot of pressure there. I think Coach Dow, that might have been a topic of conversation there. Uh, Skyla got beat and couldn't really do anything there. Seemed like our ball pressure picked up there in that possession. Oh, errant pass. Grace hustles and comes up with it. And we look to Skyla underneath. Oh, she got a little far into the basket and a nice play by uh, Walker, I believe. So it looks like they want to run everything through through Craig. Allie is playing real tight on her. Deep three. Up in and, and out. out. Walker misses that one. Smith gets the rebound. Stapleton will take shot just inside. Long three two. point line. Yep. Air balls it. No, Neal set the check back in. Walker gets to the paint. She's going to draw a foul. It's going to be on Duncan. That'll be her first, right? The fifth team foul already for the Royals to one for the Broncos. Knocks in the first free throw there. Heather Potler in. For the Broncos, O'Neal check in for Caroline Stapleton. Allie thought she was coming out there. Yeah. yeah. So. Second free throw, no. Skyla gets the rebound. Grace is flying. O'Neal to Duncan for a deep three. It's off the back of the rim. Loose ball. Duncan gets the rebound. She's going to take it in. Ah. Oh. Nice idea. Good transition bucket by the Broncos. Polter puts it in. Well, the pace we'll picked up all of a sudden. Oh. Grace got blocked, and Skylo got that rebound there. That went right to her and almost. <laughs> almost worked out better that way. Yeah. Yep. We had more up and down in that 30 seconds than we did all the first quarter combined. Mm -hmm. I don't think probably either team really liked the pace or either coach. Ah. Skyla missed the first. Yep. Almost got the friendly roll. Second one goes in. Go cross court that time. Short on the three. Smith with the rebound. She's got to be five or six rebounds already. And with a new stat program, we may have that detail for yes. you as O'Neill hits a long two. 15-9 <laughs> Royals. So for those of you who are who are just tuning in, missed the JV game or, or didn't catch us last week, got a new pro, a new program. Uh, new overlays for the for the screen and uh, Coach Galleon's trying to keep a running stat total tonight. Skyla has four rebounds right now. Four rebounds. If you'd be interested in keeping stats at games. On we would iPad, love that. We would love to have you if you want to keep stats at games on your an iPad. stats would show up on the live stream. So maybe, maybe we could put an iPad, hide it on Coach Paxton's clipboard. Mm. <laughs> and he could keep stats. Royals work it around. Grace will take a three. She no misses. O'Neal grabs the rebound, though. Nobody hustling to it. Go <laughs> Duncan from about 24, she's, and she's still long. Broncos come up with it. Craig will bring the ball up the court. Been out of football for, what, three, four months? I still mm -hmm. want to say up the field. Bob Knight would not be happy with you. No, he would not. <laughs> but then who was he oh, happy gosh. with? And he did say he wants to be buried upside down, so. True. <laughs> I guess I'd just get in the line. <laughs> Jocelyn pulls up with a long two. Nice. Oh, that ball just hung there. That's a Dude. nice shot. All right. Well, quick burst of scoring here. Five quick points for the Royals. So, Coach Paxton, what's the point of the of the 
press, by the way, as Broncos score, if you're not going to put pressure on him? Is it just to slow the tempo down? It could be a few reasons. One, it's, it's a little harder to get into your sets that maybe maybe they have good a good post player. Maybe that might be a reason. Uh, maybe uh, they have good sets. And so whenever you have to break a press, you're not organized to get into a set, straight into a set. Um, or maybe they just don't think that they can – make multiple passes in a row without making a mistake. Gotcha. So and those are kind of the situations where you might not, like, go all out and pressure. But just to disrupt the – okay. Yeah. All right. Smith is going to shoot her second free throw as Caroline Stapleton comes in for Allie Spalding. She hits the second. I'm sure there's other reasons too, but that's where I would maybe use it. Well, it's very, system. very, very – very patient by us. We're not really it's not doesn't look like we're trying to create chaos or force Travel. the tempo. Which is typically what I've seen done. Right. My limited experience of that, but I know when I coached my teams did not <laughs> I didn't like it when my tempo got sped up. Uh -oh. So I didn't have the girls to handle that all the time, but it really extended in a zone. The middle of the high post is just is it, wide open is it a, is it, are they right playing there. a 3-2? No, it's a 2-3. It's it? just really extended. Okay. Good rebound by Skyla Smith. Can't get the layup to go, but Chloe fights for it. She'll get an and one. She got a little little fired up there, too. Not not as much as her, her cousin does, but. <laughs> Even enough. I'm sorry, Gun. Even and out the team files here. Yeah. And uh, Chloe shows Landon how to get a three-pointer the old-fashioned way. Oh, almost got the steal there, Caroline Stapleton, as the Royals recover for defense. We've left somebody open in the corner. That is Lauren or uh, Emmy Isom, and she'll hit the long two. Okay, okay. Hmm. Definitely got hit. Yep. Scott was going to shoot her fifth and sixth free throws of the night already. Trying some new stuff with the camera tonight. So if you're getting seasick or motion sickness and you want the old style, just back and forth, let me know. I'm just trying to zoom in a little bit more tonight. Skyla misses the first. Fouls evened out at five to five. Oh yeah, just under three. We, we, we basically had control of this game. The score hadn't always shown it, but I don't know if I would say comfortable, but definitely we've definitely had control. Problem is, we let somebody stay around. We could all you got to do is go on a little run and we got a replay of the last. Uh Series here where Chloe got that put back. Skyla misses it. Chloe fights for it, gets it, and gets the and one. If you want to see it in slow motion there, we can do the slow motion replay. You see that? So Skyla miss. Chloe grabs the put back, puts it up, gets fouled. That was a nice play. Good there. hustle play. Two teams from the Mid-Eastern Conference playing tonight. O'Neal, Duncan, Stapleton, Stapleton, and Smith for the Royals coming out of that timeout. Oh! Uh, it's a delayed foul. Looked like a, I mean, delayed call. Looked like a I foul thought, on Caroline. Uh, yeah. But thought she was going to get away with that one. Who called that last timeout? We did. We did. Yep. That was a nice play there coming out of the timeout. Yep. Trying to use our uh, aggressive on ball or aggressive defense against us. Have Potler's first free throw attempt is short. Neither team shooting very well on free throws here. No. Skyla with another rebound. Early contender for the Paxton Corns. Paxton's. <laughs> Paxton, Paxton Farm. Farm's Sweet Corn, player of the game. I'll get my words out of order. Oh, she leaves it short. Good, Man. A little backdoor play of our own. 
Yeah, that was a nice pass from Jocelyn. Yeah, Skyla up to seven rebounds so far. You know, what we don't have with this new program is a Paxton Farms graphic. Uh-oh. Yeah. Sounds like somebody's class needs to develop one. <laughs> we got uh -oh. him. Charge. Yep. That's going to be her third, isn't it? That this is her is. third. I don't, know, I don't know about that being a charge. I think that other girl was still moving her feet a little bit. Let's see if we can get it. Unfortunate for Skyla. She's going to nope. have to go to the bench for the rest of the half here. Didn't catch it on the replay. With Delaney Collins, we'll check in for Skyla Smith. So that puts Daleville in the bonus for the last two minutes here as well. All right. They'll be shooting one and one from here on out. Royals lead by nine. Good, good ball defense by uh, Grace Stapleton. Chloe gets a steal. Nice tip to Grace. Yep. Oh, man, what a pass. Ah. Duncan converts. That was a pretty play. Crowd comes alive with that as well. Caroline's going to pick up her second foul. Yeah, we got to be careful here. Heather Poehler will step up, shoot another free throw. Spalding comes in for Stapleton. Got it. One and one. Rolls in the first one. Makes it a 10 point game again. And the second is good. So just over a minute to go. Royals with a nine point lead. It's not been a terribly like exciting game as O'Neill hits a long two again. But really not, I mean, it's not a bad way to spend your senior night. Yeah, I guess I haven't paid attention. We've been, have we pulled back that press for a few possessions? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it was, they were breaking it too easy and we weren't getting back to defend quick enough or what, but O'Neill nearly gets another steal. We really weren't getting, like you were saying, we weren't really getting anything out of it, really. Nope, and it, there's your on-ball defense as Stapleton gets fouled off the steal. Slides into the press. So we have one of our two, uh, two men taking photos for tonight. <laughs> she happened to hit one. It's like pick, trying to pick up a split. <laughs> you can hit one with the ball and you can hit one by yourself. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Tell Dwayne House to watch out next time. The ball might be coming at him. Grace's first free throw is good. Royal's been living at the line, not, not converting everything, but shot an awful lot of free throws already. We've hit about half of them. Yep, yep, as that one goes long. And Butler brings it down. Alley stops her. The Walker over to Craig. They may get a. They may pick up an illegal screen here. I hope Allie's going to get the bump. Maybe at least her second. That. That's two that I've got on her. I don't. Okay. I have yeah, not kept the second. fouls quite as. Yep. That's just her second. So that's all right. Puller hits the first. Allie knows how to play with her fouls. Well, there's only ten seconds, so yep. I. Yep. Gracie Buju checks in to prevent that cheap third. That girl's four of four on her free throw, last couple free throws here, so. Yeah. Keeping keep an them in the game. Her. And they will extend it to a press. Yeah, they're trying to take away anything here in this last 10 seconds. We'll see. Chloe will take the shot. Yeah, long. It goes long. 
Still actually a couple seconds left. That'll be it. Ten point lead for the Royals, 27-17. Hadn't really been in doubt at this point, but uh, letting the other teams, we're letting Daleville hang around a little bit. Our uh, leaders right now, Chloe O'Neill with nine. Skyla Smith with five. Jocelyn Duncan with nine. And then to round it out, Bolding hit a three. Stapleton's got one. So fairly balanced scoring for the Royals. Re looking at rebounds there. Rebounds, yep. Skyla Smith with eight. And then O'Neill with four, a couple with three, and a few with one. So, that, yeah, pretty balanced night for the Royals. I do like that. It's a nice. Well, we could even do this if you would. Uh... Oh, I don't think I have it pulled up. It might have restream. I, I had to. Oh, uh, yeah, it got closed out of it. I thought I, I had it set up earlier today where I could throw the box score on the screen, but. Is it not on a different? Because I didn't close anything. I just added a tab. I thought. I don't see it on this. You want me to turn it off or you want to leave it up for the anything? Hmm? Do you want to do a halftime report? Yeah, I'll run, I'll run the All halftime right. report. We'll have our halftime report coming up and we'll uh, join you later. matchup Thursday night and we are 11 and 6 overall as of Tuesday. Our JV team is 11 and 5 and 4 and 2 in the conference, Thursday night also being a conference game. Our 7th grade girls basketball team is 8 and 6 and our 8th grade girls are 14 and 0 being undefeated on the season. Great season. Yes, great season so far. Our 7th grade placed second in the conference tourney and our 8th grade team placed first making them the 2020 MUC champs. Both our 5th and 6th grade girls basketball teams are 1-0, so they're having a great start to the season by winning their first game. Yep. Our boys varsity basketball team is 6-4. and four. They're 3-1 and one in the conference, and they will be playing at the Rose Central on Friday night. Our JV boys team is 8-2 and two and 3-1 and one in the conference. They will also be at Monroe Central Friday night, and our C-team boys basketball team is 1-7. Our 7th grade boys basketball team is 6-8, and eight, and our 8th grade boys team is 12-5. and five. Our 5th and 6th grade boys are both 3-3, three and three, and they will pick up most of their games in the following weeks. And now to catch up on swimming. To start off the season, both high school and middle school teams received new coaches. The high school boys team won the Eastern Hancock Invitational, and our girls team is having a great year and breaking personal best. And our middle school swim is just getting started. They will have their first meet at the end of January and compete through February. And now on to wrestling. Well, Allie, they've had several invitationals and several individual victories. Avery Wills is doing very well this season, going 23-4 overall. And our middle school wrestling team has just started practice but is yet to compete. Well, that's all our sports news. Uh, we hope we got you all up to date. And let's head on to school news with Cody and Wes. Thanks, Allie and Jocelyn. I'm Cody. And I'm Wes, and welcome to EH News. Prom this year will be on May 2nd and will be held at the Indianapolis Zoo. There will also be Hancock County Once Upon a Prom dress sale at Briney Creek on February 2nd from 12 to 2 p.m. Any high school student is welcome to pick a prom dress and a free will donation is encouraged. 
Our high school academic team's theme this year is the Roaring Twenties. They've already had their first meet on January 21st at Tri High School. Our history team plays third, our science and math teams play second, and our English team plays first. We had many individual winners throughout the night. Great job to all teams. And great job to you, Wes. <laughs> Band has their Isma Solon Ensemble on February 21st, where various students take music they have previously prepared and play it in front of a judge for a rating of gold, silver, or bronze. Choir will also have their Solon Ensemble contest the following week on February 8th. Both choir and band have various times throughout the day to perform. We wish best of luck to all of the performers. Drama had their drama crew meeting for their winter musical on January 21st. They'll be playing The Little Mermaid. If anyone is still interested in helping with lights, sound, or backstage, please see Abigail Harris or attend a drama practice, which is any weekday from 5.45 to 7.45. Our FFA team traveled to Denver last week and performed in the National Livestock Judging Competition. Teams from all over the nation came to compete. Our team consisted of Connor Knudsen, Hunter Knudsen, Reed Hedrick, and Ashton Harvey. Our livestock team brought home the national championship. Also, the FFA Skillathon team traveled to Arizona for their national contest and won as well. Team members include Lauren Matlock, Hannah Rogers, Abby Manning, and Kendall Leonard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's another homecoming coming up, so make sure you ask that special someone to the dance. This dance will take place on February 29th, which is a Saturday, so sadly, this Saturday isn't for the boys. There will also be a ton of spirit days. Monday is Meme Day, Tuesday is Crazy Blue and White, Wednesday is Holiday Day, Thursday is Bikers vs. Surfers, and Friday is, of course, Class Color Day. On January 13th, our school board approved our 2020 to 2021 school calendar. Go look at the school website to see the changes, including a later spring break and an extra day off in February. The board also approved e-learning days, which will be used if there are sn no snow makeup days available. Thanks for watching our winter halftime report. Now on to the second half. Go Royals! <laughs> So when asked what Eastern Hancock basketball means to me, I automatically think of a family. Um, these past four years and beyond that, I've just felt this huge amount of like heart and love and um, just working with my team has been awesome. Not one person steals the show all the time. You know, you have your teammates with you, they're supporting you. And it's all about encouraging them and bringing them up and giving them compliments and stuff instead of bringing them down. And that's what I felt these past four years. So when asked, when asked what to think what Eastern, Eastern Hancock basketball, basketball means to me, I automatically, I automatically think of the lessons that I've learned that will help me in the coming years in uh, life outside of school, in college, in college athletics. Um, I've just learned that in order to succeed, you have to give 110%. You have to have a bond with your teammates, and that can go for coworkers in life, um, just anybody. And basketball has definitely taught me that um, success is not handed to you, and you definitely have to work for it. So I, uh, I'm so thankful for this program and how it's taught me um, so many lessons that I will be able to use in the future. When I'm asked what Eastern Hancock basketball when means asked to me, to I automatically Eastern think Hancock of a family basketball means away to me, from my actual I'll, family. Um, this program has taught me so many things, like working together will get you to where you need to be. Um, I've created an amazing family throughout, like, from sixth grade until now. Um, when I transferred from Knightstown, I never thought that I would have a big support system like I do now. And I'm thankful for this program and what it's done for my life. Seniors 2020! Seniors 2020! The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. 
Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 160,000 participants here in Indiana who take part in high school sports. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> and we're back for the second half. About 10 seconds away. If you guys notice, we've got a, we had the statistics box there. Yep, part of our new graphics package. Just kind of give you a quick so look at what everybody's doing. Yeah, Chloe with nine points, Skyla with five, Jocelyn with nine, Skyla with eight rebounds, though. Yeah, that's she, she was a beast inside. So now we're just waiting on the refs who maybe didn't realize there was a second half. I don't know. Looks like the Royals are going to roll with their starters. Yeah. Duncan Spaulding, O'Neill Smith, and Gray Stapleton um, for the Broncos. Looks to be Isom. Walker, Craig, Voss, and Potler. So it'll be Bronco ball. We're underway. 27-17 Royals. Again, let us know. Coach Paxson's trying some different things with the camera angles. Let us know in the comments what you yeah. think about it. If it's making you seasick or if you enjoy it, whichever one. Royals come back out with their uh, ball oh. defense. Oh, that's a bad foul call right there. Chloe O'Neill's going to pick that up, and it looked like a clean block. Well, we'll see. Yeah. A little slow-mo replay here. I don't know why it's cutting the first couple seconds there. It's showing Jocelyn shooting. Nah, I don't know about that. That looked like all ball to me. Oh, the uh, ball don't lie, right, as Craig shoots the first and misses. That was just Chloe's first foul. But do have two with two fouls. Or Allie, I guess, has two, and, and Skyla has three. I think uh, Caroline has two as well. So, oh, you're right. Caroline has two as well. So to Joss, down to Allie in the corner. We're going to throw it back to Grace at the top. We're just kind of rotating through. Skip pass down to Joss. Skyla inside. Oh, a little too hard off the backboard. Second time that's happened tonight. They got good, good entry pass. Got to finish that playoff. Not a bad first half for the Royals. A lot of good. Just oh, a, nice move. Uh, yep. Can't finish, though, nope. but nobody gets either. the rebound. Nope. And and back up and in. Polar going to get it. And this Chloe thought Grace had it. Grace thought Chloe had it, and mm -hmm. neither yep. one of them got it. They both got it. This is the danger of if we can't, if we can't convert, can't let him hang around. Joss looks, thinks about a deep three. Chloe will take one. She leaves it short. No. Allie fights for the rebound. It's going to be a royal ball on the jump ball. So there's another question. Did anybody get possession of that for a rebound? Or was that just a almost like where a, where a Ooh, shot goes? Uh, right there <laughs> yeah. on, the, on the floor. I typically give it to the team that gets the possession. So Deep three by Duncan. Is that her third three? At least. They, uh, yeah, I usually give it to whoever got possession if you got the arrow. So we're, we're learning all kinds of stuff about stat keeping from the stat master. Yeah, doesn't mean that I'm right. Well, for, the for, our purpose, for our purposes, you're right. <laughs> Block yeah. there, rebound, yeah. knocked around and comes away with it is Grace Stapleton. And she's pushing it. Oh. Duncan from the same spot. She resets. Yo! Oh. I don't know if it's basketball is anything like football. Football, every organization has a different way of keeping stats. Right. And then there's some, like, assists is one that's really subjective. Yes. Well, I've looked like the NFL, the NCAA, the NAIA all have different ways of keeping stats. Well, so, so is, is an assist objective because is it how how soon after you get your pass do you take the shot? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's whether some people think you get a certain number of dribbles and some people think you need to lead right into a, gotcha. a shot. But 
I don't. I'm all for doing it the, the hockey way where you make the pass to the person who makes the pass. You got to get an assist for it. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah. Just give you something extra to do. Is yes. Daleville converts 30 22. I think they, that was Voss. At some levels, they have added the screen assist. So really? if your screen leads to a score, you wow. get a screen assist. That sounds like some next gen stuff yep. there. No, Grace gets the soft bounce off the back of the rim. Yeah, I kind of like that too. That's. I would have had a lot of assists when I did. <laughs> We're going to have everything quantified pretty soon. Oh, Chloe's going to pick up a second foul. Because that was probably more legitimate than the first. But. We actually tried to keep it a couple years ago. Uh, the Aishan that year. Because Aishan led us in screen assists. Yeah, nice. But Big man. It's near impossible to keep live. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, you'd have to go back and watch. So Caroline That's Stapleton comes in for O'Neill. Scramble for the ball. Skyla just picked up her fourth foul, yes, loose did. ball. That's uh, uh, that's tough. Yeah. Bolding will check in for her. I think I heard Skyla's mom just then. <laughs> Not happy. That was a that's a tough call. Scrambling for the ball like that, and both girls diving. Right, going. I mean, you, you hate to curb her her uh, aggressiveness right. of getting after it and. Uh, Craig looking inside. Yep, there we go. Jocelyn with the steal. Oh, oh she just got the charge. Yep. You can see bad. it coming. Yep, that's too bad. That was a nice shot, too. I don't who know who drew that charge. That was a nice play. Royals jump up, uh, jump out to the early team foul lead again, just like in the first half. Yeah. Four quick fouls. Yeah. Not even halfway through the first quarter. Third quarter. Or third quarter, sorry. Potler's three-pointer short. Grace Stapleton grabs the rebound. She's looking to push it again. Throws it out to Allie in the corner. She'll take the three. No. A little bit short. Gra uh, Caroline. Caroline. Did, there we go. Craig for three, off the back rim. Broncos come up with the ball. Potler again, driving on Alley, and Alley forces her to, to scramble a little bit. Got a timeout? Yep. Yeah. I thought he was going to call a foul on that. It was like, that, no way. Yeah. Quick uh, word from the IHSA. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> and we're back here. Our uh, girls sectional draws on Sunday, 5 o'clock, I believe, on IHSAATV.org. So yeah, I heard there was a draw party for the girls. Yeah. Uh, Five-team sectional. Our camera looks like it's frozen there. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm showing something else. That is not what I'm showing at the moment. Uh, are we streaming? Yeah, we're streaming. The camera's just frozen there. So I'll, we'll we'll uh, we'll narrate what's going on while we get the camera going. Hopefully, you can hear us. Broncos will inbound under the basket into Craig. Caroline Stapleton gets the block. Grace picks it up, and she's going. Pulls it back out. It's Bolding. She thinks about it. Duncan for three. Oh, in and out. It's gonna be Bronco ball. Yeah, I'm frozen. Here. I know. We're, I mean, it's that's the outgoing stream is frozen. Mm. Also played by Caroline Stapleton, knocked the ball out. So we've got a full court man to man press now instead of the one two two. So 
We're well, working on the uh, getting the stream back. Daleville breaks the pass. Bolding knocks it out of bounds. Is this? Daleville will throw it in on the far sideline. Voss will, no, Walker's going to inbound it. Mm -hmm. Try unplugging this and plugging it back in. I'm not going to lose your. Craig with the ball at the top. I don't know. We have to have OBS, have to have that plugged in before. So Caroline stapled in with the steal. She's going to pull up. Oh, she didn't move her pivot foot. It looked like it, but she didn't. They're going to call travel anyway. 35-22 Royals, 3.07 left in the third quarter. Walker all the way across. Sorry. It's Isom. Isom to Voss. She'll, she'll drive him. Bolding forces it out. Poulter is going to travel. I don't know what is happening. I don't know if one of these came loose. Chloe O'Neill checks in for Grace Stapleton. Be Royal Ball. Caroline will bring it up. Duncan cut to the basket. Back out to O'Neill on the wing. Long two's good. 15 point lead for the Royals. Yeah, so the scoreboard is accurate. We just can't get our live picture going, folks. Caroline Stapleton's going to draw the foul there. There we go. Yeah, let's watch for it here. Coach Galleon uh, works his magic. Coach Hicks. I think it. Um, I think the plug got bumped. Mm. Saying we got to travel. I think we need to put po to Coach Hicks on the booger mobile up and down the sideline, like uh, Monday Night Football did a year ago. <laughs> Still not seeing it. Turnover to Emma Bolding. Sorry, the cameraman slack and trying to. Oh, banks in from the elbow. We have discovered that the cameraman cannot do two things at once. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that double team is ineffective. Voss with the, sh the shot, but Chloe backed off. She was uncontested. It kind of threw her off, and the Royals come away with the rebound. Duncan is going to take it from the elbow. And she gets the friendly roll. 41-22 Royals. It was a nice nice couple sequences there. Oh, Jocelyn picks the pocket. She's going to have an open layup and converts. Timeout. That's what... That's what we've been waiting for. The Royals have a 21-point lead. And have finally just grabbed this game and taken control. So I think, sorry about the video. I think what happened was the, I noticed this USB goes unplugged. loose. And I just unplugged it and plugged it back in and it um, seemed to work. So hopefully you have the feedback. You do, I saw it on my phone. Okay. Yep. So we apologize for that. That was... But you oh. could hear everything. Yeah, I think we just bumped it. And the scoreboard was working and everything, so I think that's just a – maybe if we just have one, we just plug this thing in instead of plugging the little extension cord into. So nice nice crowd here for the, the Royals on senior night. A decent student section. There is a reception for the, the ladies tonight. They're celebrating their careers following the game. There's your stats. Chloe up to 11. Jocelyn sitting on 19. 19. You know, and and uh, we grabbed control when Joss's shot started falling. She hit a couple threes there. Full court press Not again. Just playing man to man, really making the Broncos have to earn everything. This seems to be way more effective than the one two two is. Collins, Delaney Collins has checked in and she'll pick up the foul. Team's fifth. That really seems to be the only thing that's hurting us tonight is foul trouble. Yep. It's on the floor for the Royals. Bolding, Duncan, Spalding, Collins, and Caroline Stapleton. <laughs> Allie just forced a really, really bad shot. 
another foul. Yep, Bolding picks that one up. Voss with the running, he's trying to sky hook and got blocked by two Royals. Can we give a half a block? <laughs> like a half a sack? Half a sack. Duncan will run point for us now. Over to Spalding, back to Duncan, over to Stapleton. All the way across to Duncan. Man! Oh! oh. Is that her fifth or sixth? She had a layup, I know. So I'm trying to think of any other buckets. She had one at an elbow, so she's got at least... She got four on. Or she got four points out of the, uh, from two pointers. And I'm just thinking of off the top of my head. So she at 22 now. Yes. She may have six three pointers. And that last one was no joke, Landon. I've got her on four three pointers. Four. Four threes, five twos. Oh. I could have sworn she had more than that. That last one, uh, Landon O'Neill, boy, you got. She just outshot you. Because Grace will check back in for her sister. And then Jocelyn, who's not usually full of emotion, gave a fist pump yeah. kind of thing there. Good hustle by Emma Boulding. Oh. Long two by Voss. That's off the mark. Grace grabs the rebound. Looks down court. She hits Duncan again. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Balding ties it up. 23 seconds off by a little bit. Craig brings it up with Duncan just breathing right down hard on her. Oh, Ooh. shakes her. Good offensive play. Voss slips to the basket, but her layup's no good. We have a... Uh I don't know who picked up the foul there. I'm gonna give that one to Caroline Stapleton. Here. Yeah, I'll move over here. Hicks will take that. So Voss makes the first. Try to update the fouls for you here in a second. What she makes it? the second Six too. To one. And they need one one more point. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. Oh. 1.7 seconds left. We I didn't get the clock started, so. All right. We'll get there. Oh. They, uh. Not sure what the officials are checking on. Is it a foul? I don't think they knew who that last foul was on. Is that probably what they're clearing up? Did they just call a foul? I think they're trying to clear up the foul that you weren't sure of okay. earlier. Oh, a steal. Almost. Dang it. Well, so they gave that foul to Grace Stapleton because they just put it up there. Okay. And then, so we have eight fouls. Yeah, sorry. I got a phone call right in the middle of. Uh, this is our last home game, but uh, the, we actually host the sectional this mm -hmm. year, so. We will get a chance to play here again. Yep. Which is kind of unique for senior night situations. Now we haven't hosted the sectional for a while, have we? Yeah, we did. Mm, we did probably four or five years ago, yeah. I believe. Kirsten Trope's senior year, I know we did that. Yeah. I just saw the camera went funny again. Uh -huh. I think it's the plug on that camera. Right we here. had. Yep, I think it's that. How old's that? That court is brand new. We had some issues, though, in football when it was windy with that plug. So I think when you have two hands on the camera, if you're bumping Maybe that cord, I'm, it's yeah, uh, mostly. I think that may be what's doing it. So just to let you know. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors. They've been scrolling up there in the top right corner, but you can uh, see them all right here. Thank them all for supporting the Eastern Hancock Athletics and the Eastern Hancock Sports Network.
All right, fourth quarter gets underway. It's Duncan, Grace Stapleton, O'Neill, Collins, and Smith back in after she had to sit when she got that loose ball foul to give her her fourth. Duncan will take the jumper. That's long. Collins fighting for the rebound. And jump gonna, ball. Yep. And as you said, jump ball will go. You give it to the team that gets possession there. I like that. Makes it easy. Yep. Craig coming up. Duncan still playing tough D. <laughs> tough enough to pick up the foul there. Yep. All right. They let him bump all the way down until he's getting ready to shoot. So that's, that's a hard one to adjust to. It's her third, team's ninth. So we're looking to win everything tonight. Craig makes the first. I will say they're probably winning at the free throw line. They've shot pretty well, actually. Right. Second one, no. Delaney Collins gets the rebound. Grace over to Duncan. She's feeling it. Nope. Oh. Misses rebound Daleville. Every time she shoots it, you think it's going in. Yeah, got that high arcing shot. She doesn't usually miss by much. They're going to call this on Grace or Delaney. I'm not sure who's going to pick it up. Yeah, it's going to be Delaney. Delaney Collins. You know what? Her shooting, well, it's the same thing as Landon shooting. You just think it's, you know, every time they shoot, you think it's going to go in. Reminds me of one of those kick returners that every time that you punt to them, yep. you think they're going to take it to the house. Yeah, that's a good analogy. The Tyreek Hill types. Yeah, neither of them missed by very much. You know if they do, that they, they were probably fouled. As, like, not sure who that was shooting. Craig, I think, made both of them. Stapleton to Duncan, down to D Collins in the corner. She drives, gets off the short jumper. It's long. We kind of lost our mojo a little bit here. Yeah, we did. Butler drives, gets stuck. Grace will knock it out. So the Broncos will inbound under our basket. Allie Spaulding's going to check back in. Uh, Delaney will come out. Let's see if we can't get a little run going here to close it out and just coast home at the end of this quarter. The ball fake by Walker. She gets in. Skyla can't really do anything with those four fouls, though. Right. Last thing she wants to do is foul out right now. Right. After the amount of time that she's been on the bench. Right. Yeah. Allie's three-pointer's no good. Hits off the rim. Broncos collect the rebound and are off again. Cray goes to the hoop. Nice take. Yep. Jocelyn pulled back that time to not pick up the foul, and Craig banked it in. So that was a, what, eight-point eight run, something like that. Coach Dowd calls timeout, reminding the girls that the game is not over, I think. So we're going to show you a commercial from the IHSA here. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. All right, we're back here. Coming back. I think we just found a new fan of the game. I saw Coach Spalding and his dad, the renowned Bob Spalding. Oh. Yep. Like to make them the fans of the game. Yeah, I think Bob. Bob would be a good choice for the fan of the game. Yeah. Displace Cody from winning so we'll, like 18 straight times well, possible. So Bob Spalding, the, we'll give him the, the Corey, Corey Hilbert. Hilbert. Yeah. Fan of the game award. I think Bob Spaulding, as, as Jocelyn makes her first free throw, Bob, he represents what Corey Hilbert stands for. There's not a nicer guy than Bob Spaulding. No. Just genuinely good guy. But Josh just hits one. Potler hits a, takes a three-pointer. It's short. Skylar picks up her. Is that her ninth or is she in double figures yet? Rebound. She is at nine. Nine. One more, we need to get one more, Skyla. Allie's going to drive, kick it to Smith. She throws back out to O'Neal, to Spalding. Now, we could have any three-point shot we want. 
Duncan's going to take the short jumper. It's in and out. Wonder if they got instructions not to shoot up beyond the perimeter right now. I mean, it's not like we're destroying them. It's a 13-point no. game uh, here. Right. right now. Boss just makes a nice post move inside, and really, like I think it's, I think Skyla having four is hurting this, hurting her a little bit because she can't play her normal aggressive self. Because as you said, she doesn't want to foul out right now. She spent most of the third quarter on the bench, especially in her senior night. Got a chance to play. They, uh, oh. Oh, oh, good look, Allie's Pass comes right back to her, and she'll convert. Is that an assist to yourself? I don't know. It's kind of like when the quarterback completes the pass to himself yeah. off a of deflection. I think we do. <laughs> Why not? Because I get to do what I want stat-wise. Yep. Ooh. Oh, Grace gets the steal. She's going to get to the hoop and gets the and one. There we go. Royals have a chance to go over. Well, that did put us over 50. Yep. Saw the Winchester Blackford game where Winchester came back from 24 down in the fourth quarter. Oh, wow. To win. So you never know. You got to make sure you keep playing. I, I'm trying to figure out how that happens. Lots of threes, I lots watched, of defense. I watched the live stream of the Blackford live stream, and it was a lot of possessions in that fourth quarter where yeah. it just up and down. Wow. Nobody was slowing the pace. Wow, Grace looks to thread the needle to Chloe, but can't quite get the right angle there as her pass goes out of bounds. I just, that's a hot shooting by one team, poor shooting by another, and a lot of possession. That's I think what was the final, 96 to 90? Yeah, they ended, wow. up going to over, they ended up going to overtime. They were both in the 90s. Wow. And they erased most of that in a three-minute span. Jeez. Offensive right. foul there by yep. the Boss. Broncos. Moving screen, I think. Caroline Stapleton comes in for a Chloe O'Neal. Oops, forgot to stop the clock. Grace over to Spalding. She hits Duncan. Loses control of the ball. So, oh, Skyla. Boss is going to try to post her up again. Potler for long two. There's Smith's double figure yeah. rebound. And what's she sitting at points wise? Is she close there? Uh, I have her at five. Five. I believe, if my math is all correct. I can send a 13 year old run to the bench, tell him to get her five points. You should get a double double. <laughs> Steal by, oh, Ooh. not almost a steal. Uh, as I say, that's got to be over and back there. Uh, it wasn't, it was deflected, but Jocelyn got possession before she flipped it. Now, Grace Stapleton has six rebounds. Nice. Love it when guards get a lot of rebounds. Ooh, oh, that's a travel. Caroline just pulled the chair out from under her. As soon as she puts her hand down, it's a travel, I believe. Yeah. But uh, not tonight. Well, nope, right idea. Yep. So the hair under three minutes, 18 point lead for the Royals. Again, in a game that really wasn't in doubt, but took us into the third quarter to grab control. That foul Grace is going to put Grace at the line to shoot two. I've also been a fan of talking about assist and stats of, in this case, if Grace hits the free throws, you know, giving Allie an assist there. Well, mm -hmm. I've always been a fan of that. I have heard of people doing that. I don't think I don't there's think it's too right. many definitions that, that make that legit. But, but they did have – they did contribute to them – getting put in that position, so. Can you get an assist on a one-point play? 
Uh, so if she makes yeah. one free throw, do right. you get an assist? Right. right. I think it's yeah. I think oh, so. I think you'd have I, to hit two. I heard the slap. Jocelyn can't buy a bucket, but we're going to get a conversion there. As Skyla Smith's going. Oh, but not going to give her the end one there. She didn't hit the oh, shot. Oh, I thought it went in. First one's good. The lead jumps to 20 again. Second and one's good. Skyla creeps closer to that double double. Oh, almost had the step back there. Voss just. <laughs> She just determined to power her way down. She just lost control of it. But yep. She's strong. She reminds me a little of the girl that plays for Blue River. Yeah. Now she knows Skyla's got four fouls too, so she's gonna yeah. attack that. That's smart. Good, good basketball. Caroline's gonna drive, put it up. Her shot goes off the front of the rim. Skyla gets the rebound twice. Can't get it to convert. Caroline goes crashing into the Daleville bench. Elliot Hochsteller will check in for Heather Potler. We've got two minutes left. Do we have do we have the updated conference standings to know where the Royals stand? Uh, I think they can get the third. I think Shenandoah basically is clinched. And then Monroe Central uh, basically has clinched second, I believe. All right. So we're looking at possibly being third in the conference. Still have a game with Randolph Southern left. Well, behind the back footwork there. Well, having seen both those other teams, Shenandoah is, I think, a fairly standard Shenandoah team. Monroe Central was senior dominated, yeah, well, and Shen you could tell. Yeah, Shenandoah is ranked, I believe, fourth yeah. in the state. At the moment. That's been the standard for them for the last, what, 15 years, 20 years, yeah, something like that. It's a long they, time. They were really good in the early 2000s, and then they they uh, slumped. Oh. Duncan gets a nice hand as she comes out on senior night. Well, I... I don't know if the if Monroe Central and Shenandoah have played yet. That would have been an interesting game because yeah. of the the senior. I I want to say there were yeah. six seniors on Monroe Central. I believe Shenandoah won fifty four to fifty. Yeah, that no, sounds about right. Nice play by Caroline. Skyla gets the steal. With a minute to go, we're just over. Royals have the nineteen point lead. Emma Boulding checks in. Olivia Coffin, otherwise known as AC, comes in. And Ali Spaulding and Skyla Smith will get their senior send off as well. So good night for those three. Olivia Coffin picks up the steal there. Good job. Trying to get him to call her Slater. So there are two Olivias on the basketball team. They, they're calling her AC. Mm. I don't think any of those girls except my daughter know who Slater is. <laughs> Just some sort Probably of parenting not. fail on the <laughs> other parent's fault. <laughs> I did hear point. them call her AC uh, at the Waldron game the other, yep. night, the other day. I'd go with DC. Still have three road games left after this one. So I believe they play Pendleton, Randolph Southern, and I'm not sure who the other one is. Yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think Pendleton's up next. Pendleton, Randolph Southern. Have we played Tri yet? Uh, uh, that sure. might be it. I can't remember. They're all, all the games are blurring. <laughs> and like I said, Tri's pretty good. They're the ones that beat Shenandoah. 
They gave them their one loss. Emma Bolding will go to the line to shoot. Just one and one or, yeah. Hits it. 56-36. Well, this is, a, this is a nice game, too, because the uh, drive the other night to uh, Indian Creek did not turn out well for the varsity team. It was, we shot poorly. We, it's not a good, not a good night. Try to come back with this. It's a good response. A lob. Coffin's going to get a chance to shoot, too. I think the plan is to possibly stream at least one game this weekend. We're going to try to do both. Try both um, teams. We got Monroe Central at Monroe Central tomorrow. We're going to do our best. Um, this is our first time taking this current setup on the road. So we'll see how that goes. And then Shenandoah at home on Saturday, correct? Yep. That one would be a definitely, right? That yeah. Tomorrow will be how see how it goes. Yeah, we shouldn't have any problems. Um, tomorrow we have a backup plan. The crew will be in attendance. <laughs> All right. Royals ended up with a 20-point victory. Who do we want to go with as our player of the game? You want to stick with Skyla or throw That's Joss in that. there? Or? What's the stats? I know Jocelyn stats. had a lot of points. I yeah, mean, she, she got the run going. She opened the game up. Jocelyn had 23, four threes, um, three rebounds, three steals. Uh, Chloe O'Neill had 11 points, four rebounds. Mm -hmm. Caroline Stapleton, no points, but three rebounds, three assists, and a steal. Allison Spalding, two points, two rebounds, two assists, one steal. Skyla Smith, seven points, 13 rebounds, two steals. Grace Stapleton, seven points, six rebounds, three assists, three steals. And then your JV players. How about we do this? How about we give it to the three seniors? Because <laughs> well, okay Allie's defense doesn't always show oh, up in the stats, but that's true. she's always putting on the uh, guard and the other team's best player. And Skyla was, was a force inside. And... Joss, and she filled it up like she uh, she typically does for us. So, so we'll give it to the three seniors tonight. And yeah, like I said, here's the here's the box score. If you want to see the, if I can get my mouse over there, there we go. Final numbers for everybody. Again, the big numbers there. You see Jocelyn with, with 23 points and Skyla with 13 rebounds. So, and I think I actually. I, I missed the first probably minute of the game, too. So um, it's a good game for those ladies. So like I said, we will be back in action tomorrow night. Um, hopefully, as long as everything works, we've got a backup plan just in case. At Monroe Central with the boys game. And then join us Saturday for the boys at home against Shenandoah. So two big Mid-Eastern Conference games back-to-back for the Eastern Hancock Royals. And we hope to next girls game hopefully will be IHSA sectional. Uh, yep. We'll find out when and who we play uh, on Sunday night. So we will see you guys then. Thanks for tuning in.